OK, hello. How are you? Hi, I'm doing really well. How are you? Happy oh, New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you. You're the first show for the new year, so congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I got to ask right so off much. the bat about your name. It's very unusual. Wakiria. And now is that your real name or is that like your author name or? Nope, that is my real name. I was actually named after my great grandmother whose dad's favorite song was Ride of the Valkyries by Wagner, which is bum -ba -na -na -na, dun -ba -na -na. Oh, uh, um, okay. <laughs> Yeah, but they lived in Mexico and so he called it Valkyria. She was actually a writer, funny enough, but she passed away when, when my grandpa was young. So the first girl grandchild was named after her and that's me. Yeah, because I've never heard that name. I didn't know what kind of origin that was or if it was just a a made up pen name that uh, a lot of authors use a different name than their real name. I had one guy on whose name he used was Dame Handsome. And I thought it was a woman <laughs> because Dame is usually a woman. And it turned out to be a man and his real name was Damien Hansen. And he went to Dame Handsome. So it was sort of a bizarre twist on his real name. but. Uh, Okay. Yeah, I wonder if he had people mix it up a few times, and so he decided he'll just shorten yeah. it and make it more fun. <laughs> make it more easy to pronounce, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. So I was looking at your bio. It looks really interesting. You've got a book of poetry that we're going to be talking about. Is the title, yeah. I Love What I've Forgotten? Okay, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. And I want to hit on a little bit of your backstory with the Let's see, instructor slash stewardess and meditation. So you're currently doing that? You're traveling around on yachts teaching meditation? Yeah, so I actually stopped doing that in September to focus on all of my projects full time now. But I've been doing that for the past seven, eight years. OK, well, that sounds really interesting. Now, give me an idea of how big these yachts are. So they're anywhere from 88 feet to over 300 feet um, on the you can get even bigger, but that's about the largest that I worked on. Well, those are like small cruise ships, really. Yeah. Yeah. And they hold top 12 guests just by the law of the sea, unless you're commercially uh, flagged and there's a different type of requirements that you have to go through. but. Yeah, they're pretty large, like 288 feet boat as your private yacht is. It's a large boat, obviously. Well, yeah, and these are like tens of millions of dollars for somebody to buy one of these, yeah? Oh, uh, for that type of boat, it would be hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars. And then the upkeep of the boat is actually 10% of the initial cost every year, and that doesn't include actually using the boat, which is fascinating, right? So you take a $100 million yacht, you're going to be taking spending $10 million per year just for upkeep. Wow. And that doesn't it's include <laughs> or food or, exactly. your, or your crew that you have to pay, right? You said 12 guests maximum, so th that's a law regardless of how big the boat is? Yep, exactly. I didn't know that. Yeah, so you can change your flag state and stuff, but it's all about the type of licensing that you have. Okay, so you were teaching yoga on the deck, presumably, yeah. for these guests. How long would you go out for, typically? Oh, it's all dependent on the guest. You know, some people are very into yoga and they'll go for an hour and a half and some people only want a few stretches, you know. Um, it's really whatever the guest wants. How did you get this particular gig? It sounds very interesting. <laughs> oh, well, I'm from Filer, Idaho, and I, I always wanted to travel the world and so I actually I was going to Boise State. I decided to drop out. I wanted to pursue writing. And so I sold my car and moved to Fiji and, <laughs> you know, to travel the world. And I got picked up on a yacht there. So that's how it all started. I was volunteering for tips as a waitress and someone needed a 
stewardess and I was there. You happen to be in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's how it works a lot of the times. So how did you get into meditation then? Did you already know that before you got on the yacht? Yeah, I was already into meditation before I got into yachting. So I had started meditation only eight months or so prior to all of this happening. And I started in my backyard by staring at the tree and just reciting the word, word beautiful, just working on my focus on that, because that's how I understood meditation was that meditation is simply focused intention. And so my mind, when I would close my eyes, I would have all of these like visions or thoughts. And so for me, it was easier to start meditation with my eyes open. I just really want to help people know that there are ways that they can start no matter what. But um, yeah, I started meditation because I was super depressed and I had a lot of trauma in my childhood, like a lot of us really. Well, my understanding of meditation is it's the exercise of quieting one's mind. In a way, but that tends to give people this idea that they're supposed to shut off their mind in order to meditate. And that's, you know, the, the mind, its nature is to think that's what it does. And so if you try to go about it, with that approach or that idea that it's going to happen that way, you're going to really be fighting your mind. And so um, when you think of it as building a relationship with your mind so that you can direct its focus to what you need to be focused on, I feel like it constructs a more positive ground for you to start your meditation practice and then you will be able to reach that quiet focused place that you're hoping for. Well you mentioned that when you started you were using the word beautiful. I know that in the Indian culture meditation is very prominent and they use what they call mantras. Yes exactly. A saying a couple of words and they just repeat it over and over and over in their head until the mantra takes over your sort of train of thought, right? Right, right. And so I had learned about that too. And that's why I chose the word beautiful because it meant something to me, but also it was applicable to my present moment when I was staring at this tree. If my mind tried to wander, I could direct my focus back by saying the tree is beautiful. The sky is beautiful. I could give my mind a job and spell out the word beautiful. Um, it was like still a way of maintaining focus as I was a beginner. And I think it was very helpful in my practice. So you mentioned that you're no longer doing the yacht cruising and you uh, quit that to work on your projects. What sort of projects are you working on now? So I have a second book coming out that I plan to release in September. Haven't released the name of it yet. And I also have an app I'm launching and it's a mobile app. Basically, you go on there to find events and your profile is events that you've created, that you're interested in or that you've favorited or gone to. So. It's a way to bring the focus back to what people are doing and being able to connect socially online in that way without so much of being a creator, unless you're an event creator in which there's more opportunity there. And then my last project is to create, or I have a nonprofit to create a virtual reality experience for youth um, age 12 to 18 to teach them mindfulness and meditation. The app is, I, I'm a little unsure what it exactly it does. Is it like social media or is it different? It's similar to social media, like let's compare it to Instagram. But when you go on there, instead of seeing photos or videos, all you're seeing are photos for events. Photos for events, what, what sort of events? They can be any, they're all user generated. So it could be a concert, it could be 
your bachelorette party with your friends. It could be a family get together or it could be, you know, all of these different events around the world, which is what I'm hoping to help people explore. It's it's sort of advertising in one sense, if it's a concert or something like that. And then people just putting up their family reunions just because they want to share that. So you're going to eliminate the people that put up pictures of their dogs and cats. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, so when you go to a person's profile, you can find their Instagram account and still get those cat and dog photos if you need. But this is a place that you can connect a little differently. <laughs> uh, I guess the last thing before we wrap this up is tell us just a little bit about your book. It's poetry. Is there any particular theme to the poetry? It's really a lot of self-care and self-love. A lot of people use it as an escape. It's very fun, kind of whimsical. Um, if you'd like, I'd, I'll read or sing one to you right now. Okay, if you've got a short one, we got about two minutes. Yeah, let's do a short one. How about, I love what I've forgotten. Okay. I love what I've forgotten because the lines of what I am are defined by what I am not. Everything I've ever let go of has shaped me into who I am today. And I love that. I love what I've forgotten because I love who I am. Oh, that's, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, that was a short one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's very succinct. It's nice. Good job. Yeah. Thank you. And that kind of gives you an idea. Um, I've had a lot of surprising feedback, like from my friend's mom who used to struggle with alcoholism when she read this that's what she thought of was how incredible that change was for her when she decided to give up her addiction you know like loving how you've grown i, d I don't know if that's how you would say it but yeah well we do have to wind this down unfortunately <laughs> we are out of time do you have a website that you want to give out? Yeah, you can go to www.walkiriawhitlock, W-A-L-K-Y-R-I-A-W-H-I-T-L-O-C-K.com. And you can find links to all of my other projects plus more. So okay. thank you so much for having me. It's been a well, real thank pleasure. You. Thank you for coming on the show. and. Thank you for spelling out your first name because I'm <laughs> sure people would not have had uh, an easy time with that. I appreciate it. And uh, best of luck with your books and your projects. I hope everything goes well for you in this new yeah. year. Thank you so much. And thank you again to my family and friends who.